Hey yo, welcome back to Cartoon Mania. In this video, we're going to cover the iconic show Megas XLR. This beloved show boasts two action-packed seasons, each containing a thrilling 13 episodes. The story revolves around Coop, a true Jersey boy with a penchant for adventure. One day, he stumbles upon a colossal mega robot buried in a junkyard. Armed with his mechanical expertise and honed gaming skills, Coop embarks on a journey to give this robot a radical makeover. But where did this futuristic robot come from? Join us as we delve into the incredible universe of Megas XLR. In a dire future, Earth is losing a war against the Glorft, alien conquerors determined to reclaim their stolen robot, Megas. Kiva Andrew, part of the Earth Coalition, seeks to send Megas back to the Battle of the Last Stand, humanity's last major offensive against the Glorft. Humanity lost that battle, but Kiva believes that Megas could change the outcome of the war. However, the Glorft intervenes, damaging Megas and sending it randomly into the past. Coop, an unwitting mechanic in the present, stumbles upon Megas in a junkyard. He repairs and modifies it, making it operational. While he is demonstrating his new ride to his friend Jamie, Kiva arrives to retrieve Megas but can't pilot it due to Coop's alterations. She offers to train Coop but their location is discovered by the Glorft. A battle ensues and Coop, with his newfound piloting skills, defeats the Glorft attackers, leaving their leader, Gorath, vowing to return. The Glorft, now stuck in the past, seeks Megas to return home, unaware that it's no longer functional. As Coop enjoys hamburgers, Kiva contemplates her decision to remain in the past. One day, a villainous Magnanimous notices Megas and takes an interest in it. While Coop is busy repairing Megas, and Kiva works on constructing a new time drive, Magnanimous extends an invitation to Coop to participate in the Galactic Combat Championship Federation. Coop accepts, and they head to the space station, where Coop even wins his initial matches, but things take a suspicious turn. Kiva collects parts for the time drive, but faces security guards when she enters a restricted area, suspecting Magnanimous of foul play. Coop is pressured to throw a match, but he refuses. When the showdown unfolds, Magnanimous traps Kiva and Jamie, but is ultimately defeated. Megas takes on a horde of enemy robots and confronts Magnanimous in a final battle, resulting in Magnanimous being hurled into a quantum singularity. The gang then sets course for the planet of the space Amazons. During a test flight of Megas' space flight engines, Coop accidentally collides with a prison ship piloted by crab-headed aliens Tolbit and Florxen disrupting their mission to dump the dangerous threat Regis into a black hole. On Earth, the gang seeks relief from the scorching heat with slushies. But Kiva reveals that people in her time consume ration packets of electrolytic rehydrating fluid. <laughs> okay, weirdo. Regis crash lands on Earth, wreaking havoc and destroying every slushy spot Coop attempts to visit. It absorbs various structures, growing larger and overpowering Megas. When multiple Regis units appear, Megas overheats and shuts down while emitting smoke. Kiva realizes Regis relies on solar energy, prompting Coop to create smoke that blocks the sun, covering city in ash from Megas' thrusters. Finally, Coops gets his slushy, and Jamie convinces Kiva to try it, resulting in a brain freeze and laughter. Tolbit and Florxen discuss hot tea in a three-month time window before the sun returns while cleaning up Regis' remnants. One day, Coop joins a car show, showcasing his prowess in various events and causing unintentional havoc in a truck pull competition. However, as the competition nears its conclusion, Megas malfunctions, leading to significant damage in the convention center that bizarrely prompts cheers from the audience. This glitch, originating from a cheese-clogged CPU core, attracts the attention of the Glorft, who prepare to attack Earth. Coop and his friends engage in a wild freeway chase with the Glorft, and after an eventful mid-air landing on Megas, Coop takes manual control of the robot and comically dances to fend off Glorft mechs. Unexpectedly, participants from the car show arrive to aid Coop, sparking a frenetic battle that forces the Glorft to retreat, except for Gorath, who ultimately crashes into a factory, swearing vengeance. Coop, Kiva Andrew, and Jamie encounter an unexpected minefield in space while training with Megas. Their journey leads them to a mysterious ring world, which Coop crash lands on. As they explore, they are attacked by a giant metallic bug, later revealed to be a mechanical life form. Discovering that the ring world contains a wealth of information on various species, including the Glorth, Kiva believes it might hold details on constructing a time drive. They encounter a colony of mechanic insects, undetected due to the ring world's energy cloaking. However, Megas begins to malfunction as an insect drains its energy. While Kiva and Jamie repair it, Coop fights off the insect infestation. 
Ultimately, Magus recovers its power, allowing Coop to confront the insect threat. The situation intensifies as a swarm led by a giant insect attacks, leading to a climactic showdown where Coop unleashes a powerful new ability, the Phoenix Explosion, to defeat the insects. Despite their victory, Coop accidentally triggers a catastrophe, causing the ring world's destruction. Whoops! Coop's plans to enjoy a special wrestling event called the Millennium Mash are thwarted when he can get a TV signal. He attempts to jumpstart his satellite dish using Magus, but this creates a powerful electromagnetic wave that awakens a colossal planet-sized monster in space. As Megus battles the monster, Coop ventures into its stomach to retrieve his satellite, while Kiva modifies Megus' weaponry to potentially overload the creature with radio waves. However, Coop's earlier modification of the electromagnetic pulse torpedo into a refrigerator proves fortuitous as the monster's adverse reaction to the food within causes it to explode, scattering its remains across the solar system. When the Glorf's ultimate weapon approaches Earth, it collides with the monster's remains, leading to its destruction. Despite resolving the crisis, in the end, Coop realizes his TV signal issue was due to an unpaid cable bill, prompting him to rush out to rectify the situation as the monster's slimy remnants continue to rain down on the city. Coop stumbles upon a mysterious device at a garage sale, mistaking it for a video game. Ah, <laughs> Coop, like, not everything is a game, buddy. Unbeknownst to him, it's actually a prison for the violent alien monster Gurkek who had been convicted by an intergalactic court of law for destroying countless planets. While Coop is occupied with his new game, Kiva and Jamie head to a mall, with Kiva trying to blend in by shopping for less conspicuous clothing. However, her surge leads to her getting kicked out of the mall due to an altercation with a security guard. Meanwhile, Coop's gaming adventure inadvertently releases Gurkek, leading to a battle with Magus. As Kiva and Jamie return to join the fight, they discover the true nature of the device and attempt to contain the other alien prisoners. Coop takes on the formidable task of capturing and compressing them into a massive ball, which he hurls into the bay. However, Gurkek becomes even more powerful, threatening to destroy the planet with a fusion reaction. To stop him, they need to cool him down, and a conveniently timed wave caused by the earlier ball toss saves the day. In the end, they decide to imprison Gurkek inside a video game based on a preschool show an amusing twist to resolve the situation. The Glorft have developed a new mech, a fusion of their technology and the human-modified stolen avatar prototype, designed specifically to capture Magus. Meanwhile, Coop is working on his car while Jamie's long-standing crush, Gina, passes by. Aiming to impress her, Jamie borrows Coop's car for a ride. However, Kiva reminds Coop that the car is Magus' control center, leading to Coop revealing he temporarily deactivated Magus' control systems, so it's just a regular car for now. Coop invites Kiva to play video games, but their fun is interrupted by Gorath's arrival in his new machine, Mega Magus, causing havoc in the city. Coop activates Magus, even though he hasn't fully modified the secondary control bridge, leading to a chaotic battle that inadvertently causes more destruction. Meanwhile, Jamie, realizing Coop's vulnerability without the car, interrupts his date with Gina to help his friends. With Gina's accidental activation of Megus's atomic disruption cannon, Coop regains control of Megus, defeats Gorath, and saves the day. Jamie and Gina, however, end up feeling worse for wear after the experience. S-Force, inspired by Power Rangers and Gatchaman, learns of a villain causing destruction on a tiny planet and mistakes Coop for the villain when they witness him inadvertently wrecking Jersey with Magus. Back on Earth, Coop is attacked by the S-Force, who summon their Zorps to fight him. Coop defeats the Zorps, but the S-Force combines their mechs into a powerful robotoid to continue the battle. Ender, an intergalactic criminal and the S-Force's nemesis intervenes, but the S-Force believes Coop is allied with him. Coop tries to explain, but is forced into a combat with Ender. After Ender defeats Coop and leaves destruction in his wake, Coop devises a plan to integrate the Zorps into Magus to regain its energy. Coop then faces Ender again and activates Omnicron 13, leading to unintended consequences that nearly destroyed the whole universe. Ultimately, Coop saves the day, convincing the S-Force he's not the villain. The S-Force departs less serious, overweight, and burger-loving, all due to Coop's influence. During a rough training session with Jamie and Goat, Coop damages Magus' photonic stabilizer, which, if not replaced, will cause the robot to explode. Remembering a junkyard planet they recently found, the team lands there to search for a replacement stabilizer. 
They encounter Fred, a giant worm belonging to the planet's owner, Varsin, who may have the part. Varsin discovers Magus' time drive and desires to use it for his own gain. When they refuse, Varsin attacks with construction vehicles and a giant robot. Goat arrives in his filmsy robot, providing a distraction for Coop to escape with the stabilizer. After a battle and a planet-destroying explosion, Coop fixes the stabilizer with duct tape, saving the day. The intergalactic bounty hunter Darkloss targets Kiva, leading to a battle between her lead monster and Migas, which Migas wins. Afterward, while celebrating at Speedy Mart, Migas is towed for illegal parking. Coop needs to pass a driving test at the DMV to retrieve it. Meanwhile, Darkloss reveals her plan to extract future information from Kiva's brain for profit. Coop and Jamie eventually pass their tests, but Coop's reckless driving causes more chaos when he returns to rescue Kiva from Darkloss. Darkloss controls more monsters, but Coop discovers the lead monster is intelligent and removes the mind control device on it, which leads it to take Darkloss to its planet for trial. And in the credits, she's seen picking up trash while Coop, Jamie, and the giant monster playfully throw paper at her to pick up. Coop, on a quest to reach a monster truck rally, misuses the transpatial drive, transporting himself, the gang, and Migas to the Halcyon Worlds. There, they accidentally destroy a sacred treasure, the Flame of Azeroth, enraging the Emperor. Coop becomes the target, with the Emperor declaring that whoever captures Migas will be the new ruler. Coop must fend off ruthless warriors who are willing to destroy each other to claim the throne. After multiple encounters, Coop hides in a nebula to evade detection. Jivan, a warrior, uses a null distortion generator to disable Megas, allowing Zanzor to capture it. Zanzor becomes the new emperor, but Coop manages to free Megas. When the emperor wields a powerful sword, the metal maiden, Coop seizes it but accidentally destroys it. Chaos ensues, but Coop ultimately overpowers the warriors with a 5 minutes till end of episode button, becoming the new emperor. His attempt to reignite the flame of Azeroth results in a fiery catastrophe and the planet explodes as Coop and the gang escape. During a battle with the Glorfth, Coop activates a reckless modification in Megas, accidentally teleporting himself into the Glorfth mothership. Megas crashes to Earth and Kiva attempts to pilot it but causes massive destruction before crashing into the Glorfth mothership. Gorath interrogates Coop, aiming to extract Megas' time drive secrets. When Coop's daring escape plan ejects Gorath from Megas, he rescues Jamie and Kiva. Together, they fight the Glorfth but face overwhelming odds. Megas loses an arm and Gorath deploys the Eradicator, a weapon to destroy Earth. Coop's frantic button pressing accidentally shorts the Glorfth ship's null space generators. The mothership implodes and Gorath vows vengeance. In the end, Megas escapes, leaving Kiva surprised by Coop's victory. In the aftermath, as Coop and Kiva focus on repairing Migas, Jamie stumbles upon a group of Sailor Senshi-style space girls called the Ultra Cadets. Believing Jamie to be the legendary Coop, they implore his help in saving their imperiled planet, threatened by a colossal fire monster known as Kordok. Eager to impress, Jamie masquerades as Coop and is whisked away to their world. Armed with an ancient feminine robot, Jamie confronts Kordog and, through a stroke of pure luck, manages to defeat the monster by hurling it into a volcano. He returns to the cadet's city, where he is hailed as a hero. However, the real Coop arrives with Megas, sparking a clash with the Ultra Cadets, while Jamie, after overcoming his ego, leaps to Coop's rescue. Although Coop initially pounds Jamie while he's still inside the robot, he eventually allows him to depart. As they leave the planet, it becomes clear that Jamie's actions inadvertently bolstered Kordok's power, setting the stage for the monster's looming assault on the cadet's city. Coop faces a race against time as he attempts to return a video to Vidhut before losing the membership due to late fees, with Kiva and Jamie in tow. Along the way, they encounter T-Bot, a giant robot, and Magnanimous, an old foe who seeks revenge. Magnanimous presents Coop with a choice, defend his champion title by battling T-Bot or forfeit the championship belt. Coop decides to fight, sparking a series of battles against the variety of opponents summoned by Magnanimous. Despite Megas suffering severe damage, Coop prevails even against Magnanimous himself. However, Coop's adversaries turn on Magnanimous after discovering there was never a reward for defeating Coop. As they chase after Magnanimous, Coop barely returns the video in time, and the trio decides to rent the same movie for the ninth time, much to Kiva's amusement. Coop, Kiva, and Jamie face a catastrophic crisis when Megas' battle with a rampaging robot damages its matter-antimatter propulsion system. 
To prevent Earth's destruction, Coop jettisons the unstable device into space. The planet is saved, but the explosion opens a rift, releasing the Glorfd's Karajor from null space. While dealing with this, Coop reluctantly agrees to babysit his obnoxious cousin, Skippy. Bored, Skippy tags along on Megas, and their adventure leads them to a Glorfd facility on the moon. It becomes apparent that the Glorfd led by Gorath plan to crash the moon into Earth. As they confront the Glorfd, Skippy unexpectedly plays a pivotal role by stealing the engine's activation key. Coop inadvertently activates the engine, forcing him to destroy the main power generator and the portion of the moon to prevent the catastrophe. The Glorfd retreat, vowing to return. Back home, Coop's annoyance with Skippy continues while Kiwa worries about the potential ecological consequences of their actions, and Coop heads to the candy store, oblivious to the brewing storm. Coop, Jamie, and Kiva set off for the Gonzo Galactic Gaming Convention in Las Vegas, but find themselves in an unfamiliar area near an abandoned gas station instead. When Migas inadvertently triggers a hidden platform underground, they are taken to Area 50, a secret government facility where alien technology and monster secrets are kept. Exploring further, they encounter a mysterious green robot called Wrecker, capable of absorbing Migas's power. Kiva reveals that Wrecker loses power naturally, but advises patience. However, Coop unintentionally informs Wrecker about Vegas' electricity, leading it to drain the city. Coop eventually cuts off Wrecker's power source by destroying the city's dam, and a fierce battle ensues. Despite its power-absorbing abilities, Coop outsmarts him, causing it to deplete his energy cells and render himself vulnerable. In the end, Coop traps it deep beneath the Grand Canyon, ensuring he can no longer absorb energy or pose a threat. Coop, excited about celebrating Thanksgiving, races Migas back to Earth, but crashes through Saturn's rings due to his lack of attention. Ah, uh, happens to the best of us. This action causes debris to follow Migas to Earth with a small rock landing in a nearby lake. From the lake emerges Genok, a green, blob-like creature seeking a heat source to grow and spread its spores across the galaxy. Coop and Jamie educate Kiva on the meaning of Thanksgiving before attending a parade. During the parade, Megas accidentally steps on Genok, who seeks to assimilate a parade balloon, Augie, the adorable aardvark, for power. Genok attacks Megas, initially brushed off as a prank by Coop until Kiva identifies the creature as a plant-like threat. Coop fights Genok, but his attacks prove ineffective due to Genok's elastic form. Megas temporarily freezes Genok, but he escapes to the sewers and reassembles himself to attack again. Controlling various parade balloon forms, Genok causes damage to Megas, but Coop realizes Genok feeds on heat and overfeeds him with Megas' flamethrower, causing Genok to explode. With the city safe, Coop returns home for Thanksgiving leftovers. The S-Force, captured by the villain Zarek, seeks Coop's help to rescue them and save their home planet, Saurus. Coop agrees to help and Megas heads to Saurus, finding the planet in ruins due to Zarek's attack. Zarek plans to execute the S-Force by banishing them to the Infinity Zone, an inescapable alternate dimension. Argo is almost thrown into the gate, but is rescued by Megas. The S-Force reunites aboard Megas, but a distraction leads to Megas falling into the Infinity Zone, seemingly lost. However, Megas punches its way back out, and the S-Force retrieves their Zorps and battles Zarek's forces, with Megas climbing atop the Star Serpent. Coop and the S-Force defeat the enemy, with Megas using the serpent's tail to destroy its head. Zarek is arrested, and Targon acknowledges that heroes like the S-Force will always need allies like Coop, although Coop accidentally disrupts the ceremony by causing the serpent's tail to fall over the city. While exploring a distant planet, Megas finds itself besieged by dragon-like space monsters due to Coop's failure to perform an essential oil change. Their dire situation takes a sudden turn when an invisible spaceship, the Saving Grace, comes to their rescue. Captivated by Kiva's beauty, the ship's captain, Jean-Michel Warlock, offers them hospitality. Coop seeks food, Kiva hopes to find a time control unit, and Jamie just tags along. Warlock's infatuation with Kiva intensifies, and he attempts to keep her by capturing the rest of Megas' crew. A confrontation ensues, leading to a sword fight where Kiva defeats Warlock. He reluctantly agrees to let her go, but ejects Migas into space, assuming it would be the last they'd see of her. However, with resourcefulness and cheese stakes, Coop revives Miga, saving Kiva from Warlock's clutches. The battle continues, but Coop's accidental summons of space monsters prove to be their salvation, causing chaos on Warlock's ship and forcing him to retreat, vowing to return. Back on Earth, Coop fixes Migas' horn and Kiva expresses her trust in Coop's rescue skills. 
while Goat's comical attempts at wooing her are met with laughter from the crew. Megus makes an appearance at a rock concert, with Coop hoping to experience crowd surfing. However, trouble brews when Kiva and Jamie discover Glorfed infiltrators in the audience. Their target is revealed to be a girl, Ali, a distant ancestor of Kiva. Gorath's sinister plan is to eliminate Kiva's ancestor, preventing her existence and stopping Megus from being pilfered by her in the future. A confrontation ensues, pitting Kiva against Gorath while Jamie and the girl escape. Kiva manages to thwart his scheme by exposing him as a Glorfth using a damaged holographic device. Gorath retreats, vowing vengeance for his thwarted scheme. Kiva, however, spends a moment connecting with her ancestor, who ultimately decides her life is too chaotic and opts to return to Brooklyn. Back home, Jamie humorously contemplates the idea of being Kiva's ancestor if he had hooked up with Ali, much to Kiva's disgust. Now that's an awful thought. Megus races through space at a dangerously high speed, leading to a crash landing on an ice-covered planet where Megus immediately encounters hostility from a green robot guardian. After a fierce battle, Megus prevails but is then besieged by gorilla-like aliens known as the Cryox, who reveal that the destroyed robot was their guardian against the Cerellians, a race of sentient machines that consume water to cool their systems. The Cerellians have devastated their own planet's resources and now seek to conquer the Cryox world. Coop and Megus pledge to protect the Cryox and after a series of mishaps, Coop launches the Cerellians' marker into their homeworld, redirecting the laser and obliterating the Cerellian fleet, saving the Cryox homeworld but drastically altering its environment. Megus departs, leaving the Cryox to adapt to their transformed world. Coop accidentally opens a wormhole while trying to upgrade Megus' sound system, landing them on an unfamiliar planet. They encounter docile robots in a garden, but are attacked by guards and taken to Klar, who wants to reprogram Magus. Klar realizes Magus is piloted by a human and orders their destruction. Kiva reactivates Magus, and Coop defeats the guards but faces a new threat as Klar controls robots with a satellite dish. Coop manages to disable the dish without harming the robots. Liberated robots help them find a way home, and it's revealed the planet was a prison for violent robots. In the end, one of them named 32 decides to attack Earth to show gratitude to Coop for freeing him. In a far-off alien bar, Skalgar, a notorious intergalactic criminal, is frustrated by the low bounty on his head and seeks to boost his reputation. After causing chaos in the bar, Skalgar catches a transmission from Earth about Coop's invention of a universal remote that can control anything. He becomes interested and travels to Earth, hoping to seize the remote's power. Meanwhile, Coop and his friends are at a drive-in theater where Coop demonstrates his universal remote. Skalgar arrives, attacks Megus and steals the remote, leading to a battle where Coop eventually outwits Skalgar and regains the remote, but not without causing destruction in the process. In the final two-parter episode, the Glorfth are attempting to destroy the planet using a rotating planet core destroyer. Kiva is hacking the device while Jamie is keeping a panel open for her, and Coop is bored, trying various controllers to fight Glorfth soldiers. Coop eventually gets a golden controller that he likes. Gorath decides to confront Coop personally, leading to a battle where Coop accidentally triggers the Konami code, warping them into an alternate dimension. In this dimension, they encounter mechs that initially seem like aliens but turn hostile, leading to Coop and Gorath being taken prisoner by an army. In their cells, they meet an alternate dimension Jamie who believes they are from his world. Coop and Gorath search for their mechs, triggering a battle that causes the base to collapse. Coop saves Jamie's life, but Jamie still sees him as an enemy. Alternate dimension Kiva arrives, and Coop learns that his other self is responsible for the apocalyptic world in this dimension. In this alternate dimension, evil Coop derisively mocks Coop's weight and belittles Megus, claiming he abandoned it as a mere toy long ago. He then reveals his possession of Coop's dimension coordinates and his intention to destroy Earth once more. Evil Coop unleashes a devastating rocket punch that obliterates the Karajor base and severely damages Megas. Coop, along with Gorath and alternate Jamie, devises a plan to infiltrate Evil Coop's fortress, damaging the warp gate in the process but losing Megas. Alternate Jamie explains the grim transformation of Coop in their dimension, detailing how he turned evil after defeating the Glorth, getting in shape, and abandoning Megas. Coop acquires an upgraded alternate version of Megus and returns to their dimension to confront Evil Coop and his formidable army, leading to a fierce battle that ends with Evil Coop inadvertently trapped between dimensions. 
Following their victory, Gorath attempts to befriend Coop, who accidentally trips on the core destroyer and destroys a lot of Gorath's army. An enraged Gorath departs with a vow to return, while Coop recounts his surreal alternate dimension adventure to Jamie and Kiva, who skeptically dismiss his story. So, this was the entirety of Amiga's XLR from beginning to end in detail. If you enjoyed it as much as we did making it for you, then drop us a like, subscribe to our channel, and press that bell icon to never miss an update from us. Also, do let us know in the comments which series you want us to cover next. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace!